Today's guest is Tanner Folk, a singer-songwriter based in Nashville. Tanner is quickly growing into an artist to watch. Fresh off the release of his latest single, Drink of You, welcome Tanner. Hey, how's it going, man? Good. How are you doing? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. That's good. Good to have you here. So let's start you back you guys at have the a beginning. Good Easter? Yeah. Oh, it's it a great Easter. How's yours? Yeah. It was great, man. Family. Family that's came awesome. over. It was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great time. Hey, well, let's start your story back at the beginning. Where were you born and raised? And how did music first come into your life? Um, I was born and raised in a, a small town in Kansas called Osawatomi. Um, went to went to school there. Um, I started playing music. Well, seriously, started playing music about the age of 14. Um, my grandma actually signed me up to uh, <clears throat> to sing at this uh, organization called the Old Time Pickers, Fiddlers and Singers. Um, and I had not really started playing an instrument yet at the time. So I would go and I would sing with like a, a band that was there, like a house band kind of. Um, and so I would, I would do that. And then I finally got interested in playing the guitar. And my grandfather bought me, bought me a guitar and showed me like a C, G and a D. And then it was off to the races, man. And then I never put it down. And, and I was in a couple of high school bands and stuff, you know, we played like eighties hair, hair, uh, hair band music. <laughs> um, and, and I really wanted to be a guitar player. And, and so, um, I never really thought I was going to be a singer song or a songwriter. Really. I, it was kind of just for fun at first and then, uh, decided to take it serious. And it's, it's, it's been a, a cool year. I've been doing this on my own now, almost a year in May, it'll be one year. I'll be out on my own as an artist. Um, and it's been, it's been great, man. And it's, it's, it's been steady climb, which is fantastic. And considering where everything was a year ago with COVID it was kind of a tough time to decide to do this, but, uh, it's worked out and uh, we're grateful to get back on the road and, and some back to some type of normalcy, I suppose. Yeah, that's awesome. So let's take it back a little bit. When did you first start performing? You mentioned you were a young age. Um, and what was that like for you as a kid to start performing? I, I've always liked to be the center of attention. So um, I, I started singing at the, at the old time fiddlers and pickers, uh, I would say around the age of 12, 13. Um, my, my cousin, uh, she was a way better singer than I was and she was doing it. And so I wanted to do it. Um, so I would say around the age of 12 is when I really started to get into it and perform. Um, uh, so yeah, that was about 12 or 13, I think. That's awesome. Were you nervous as a kid to do it or is it kind of just your element? Um, I, I guess I was like maybe the first couple of times I, I struggled really hard with actually like, uh, singing, singing, like I would just try to like mumble the words, you know? <laughs> uh, but I finally got, I finally realized that I could only do it if I gave it a hundred percent. So after like, I would say the first few times of, of getting up there in front of the old, old people and they were so, they were so like warming and they made me feel really good about it. So they boosted my confidence and from there it was great. That's awesome. Yeah. All people are like so supportive. It's, it's kind of awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so what kind of artists were you listening to at the time? What was the music going on around you that influenced you? Um, you know, it's kind of a surprise because I'm a country artist now, but I was really, really into Shinedown as a teenager, uh, like Shinedown, Breaking Benjamin, uh, things like that. They were like stained, but I, I, I had like a very, uh, big obsession with Guns N' Roses at that time too because nice. I wanted to be a guitar player and and I was like man this guy Slash is, is insane I want to be just like him you know yeah and I, I remember like watching videos when I was a kid on like YouTube and I'm like man I'll never get to see Guns N' Roses in concert ever you know and then I finally did I actually did get to see him uh with the with the real band um so that was really cool but yeah I would say like rock music was really um like, like I didn't, my dad and my, and my mom listened to rock music, but my grandparents always listened to like oldies and, and like in late nineties country, like Brooks and Dunn and stuff. So the country actually came later, but uh, my influences really came from rock and roll. That's awesome. Yeah. I remember uh, on guitar hero three slash was like my go-to guy. That was my yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude. I was like, yeah, it was my favorite game as a kid. I yeah. mean, it really was. That game was like legendary for us in our age yeah. group. Absolutely. I mean, that was a huge part of my upbringing, at least. 
Um, yeah, so I loved it. When you started playing guitar, did you gravitate towards those rock songs, kind of the metal things, or did you pick up more towards country at that point? You know, the very first song I ever learned on guitar was actually a country song called Wildwood Flower. Um, I think it was a Mother Maybell uh, song, and it, and it was more bluegrassy kind of. Um, but I learned that one, and then I, I quickly moved into the uh, learning how to play like Simple Man and, and stuff like that. Um, just basic guitar stuff. I told myself I was not going to learn how to play Smoke on the Water. I was like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be like every other person and, and be like, that's the only song I know how to play. So uh, I think really like the big thing for me was YouTube was huge. It had kind of just really started like blowing up uh, like, like Bo Burnham was big, like at that time and stuff. So YouTube is really starting to take off. And Marty Schwartz was my guy, taught me a whole yeah. bunch of stuff. I know if you play music, you know who Marty Schwartz is. Yeah. So uh, I used to spend a lot of hours in my bedroom learning how to play like, anything from nirvana to to hair metal to to anything you know i could i could try to learn so yeah that's awesome did you start writing songs as soon as you got a guitar or did it take you out again the writing process you know i actually didn't start writing music until i was out of high school because i i never really thought that that was some be something that i was going to do with my with my life i I always wanted to do it, but I was, I was always like, man, I'm really bad at writing songs. You know, I've, I, it took a lot of like practice and it's still like every day, like practice for me. Like I'm not a natural songwriter. So um, I've got some friends that are like really, really good at it. And I, and I listen to what advice they give to me. Um, and I just, you, you're going to write a hundred bad songs before you write one good one. And I think, I think it, it's kind of cool. Um, just from like my very first song I released to the one I just put out, how much different and how broader of like lyricism has grown in just a year's time. So I've, I've, I've really tried to work on the writing aspect of it a lot. Um, like I said, it wasn't a natural thing for me. So uh, it's, a, it's still every day I'm working on it. So, yeah, that's awesome. So how did, what's the story of what took you to Nashville? What took you out of Kansas to moving to, you know, the big music city. I mean, did you start writing before that and that take you there? How'd it go? Well, <clears throat> well, to tell you, tell you the truth, I still live in Kansas, actually. Um, I frequent Nashville quite a bit now. Um, me and my wife have, have little kiddos. So um, the move w is going to be tough, uh, especially on the kids. So we're still working out how we could get there full time. But um, I, I, like I said, we frequent and we go quite a bit. Um, and I've and I've got some really nice, <clears throat> made some really great friends out there. Um, the guy that actually produces all of my music just moved to Nashville on Thursday. So I, uh, that that was a big step for him and <clears throat> and uh, getting everything worked out so that the band could could potentially move with us would be ideal. Um, right now is kind of a bad time. To uh, to buy a house, to do to do a lot of anything, you know, with the way yeah. that the market's been so. Uh, like I said, we're, we're still traveling and we're still getting around and, and I'll actually be in Nashville here in just, here in just a couple of weeks again. So, um, it's in the, it's in the plans, but we just haven't quite made that move yet. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. That's good to know. That's, uh, that's cool though. You, you go and travel there a lot, you know, it seems like a lot of your posts have been, you know, playing mm -hmm. in Nashville and recording there and all yeah. those other things. So that's great. Yeah, I, I tag Nashville. I mean, I tag Nashville a lot on my, on my posts and stuff because, like I said, like we frequent quite a bit. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's in the, it's in the works for sure. Yeah. That's awesome. How does the music scene in Kansas compare to Nashville? Um, well, right now Nashville's still pretty locked down. Uh, excuse me. Um, there's no dancing allowed right now, which is, which is weird. So you go into a bar and like all over the, all the tables, it says no da dancing is prohibited. Wow. You know, which, which is kind of weird. That's all so, <laughs> I know, I know, I know, man. It's, it's, it's definitely weird. Um, I think the biggest difference um, about, about the Kansas to Nashville is, is that in Nashville, everybody's got the same goal in mind. You know, everybody's very goal oriented where this is what we want to do with ourselves. And this is, you know, this is exactly what, where we want to be. And Kansas is great. Don't get me wrong. Like, but, there really isn't much of a local music scene um, for country music, I should say. 
Um, so I think that's the biggest the biggest difference in, is the gap in like the the actual scene that that is country music and just the overall like I, I'm looking for the word, but just just the overall like the end goal is just different. Um, the people are about the same, really. I mean, it's, it's the Midwest, so everybody loves country music. So but 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 other than that aspect of of just the scene is just so much bigger there really is, is what it comes down to. Yeah. Makes sense. So you mentioned end goal. What is it that drives you to do music? Like what do you hope to accomplish and what pushes you to get there? That's a tough question uh, because I mean, I have my kiddos, which obviously I want to give them the best life that they could have. Um, and uh, it's, it's not, it's never, for me, it's never been about, it's never been about like the money or anything like that. It's always just been, for me to leave something behind for my, for my family and, and my kids as kids and so on and so forth is, is to make, make my mark as, as, as someone who worked hard and, and really got, went out and did what they wanted to do. And, and I would love to, to perform. I like the ACM awards someday. Or, you know, that's, that's like my big goal or my, my number one goal is, is to play at the Grand Ole Opry. That is, that would be, if I didn't do anything else, that would be the the top of the mountain for me. Yeah, that'd be amazing. And you're talking about leaving stuff behind. I mean, most people would think, you know, money and all that stuff. But I feel like there really is something special about like having your father or, you know, their dad leave behind music and a legacy of like music and his emotions and his feelings and stuff in these songs. I mean, that's something incredibly special to them or will be, I'm sure. Yeah, sure. Well, and, and a big a big thing thing that kind of jump started this for me was I lost um I lost a family member that was she was really we were really close we actually she's who I mentioned that used to sing with me at the at the pickers and fiddlers and and uh she passed away uh four years ago it would be in Jan it was January and uh and I just thought to myself uh you know I miss hearing her voice like I really miss hearing you know how you know, just, just being able to, to turn something on and listen to her and see her. And so I kind of really thought about that with, with my music and, and I kind of put my, my, my debut song all by the drinks was actually somewhat about her. Um, and so I kind of really just wanted to leave something for, for my family and the people that cared about me and, and they could go back and listen to all of my music, hear my voice, hear the words that I had to say. And they'll always have that and it'll always be here forever, you know. Yeah. So that was a big uh, inspiration for me to really kind of take this on and, and do it as well. Yeah, that's an amazing perspective. I think it's really special. And I think, you know, I think it, it'll be great for, you know, your kids and all that. That's that's amazing. Um, what was it like to first get into songwriting? Like when you first picked it up, was it a challenge for you? You know, did did you know what you wanted? Did, were you trying to find your sound? How was it? Yeah, it, it was kind of challenging because, like I said, I put so much like of my time into kind of rock and roll music. And and, you know, I I, I listen. My dad, you know, grew up on like we grew up on George Strait and, and Alan Jackson and all of that stuff as well. But the songwriting aspect of it for me was was definitely tough in the fact that it took a little while to find who I was going to be and, and to kind of find which, which uh, niche that, that I fit into. So I think that with my songwriting, um, it, it's kind of like a good mix of like country and like a little bit of rock. And uh, it, it did take a while to find that. And I've written a thousand terrible songs that I will never like see the light of day. But um, like I said, it's, it's an everyday process and it's, it's work for me every day. So I enjoy it. Um, I don't know if my wife enjoys listening to me scream in the other room and try to <laughs> hear something out, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it's, it's, it's work for me for sure. And I, and I really enjoy the process of it. So that's awesome. So how's recording been for you? Have you recorded yourself? Do you go to a studio? Is there a team you work with now? What's your experience been with that? Yeah, so we've uh, we've actually recorded all of our all of our projects through um, his name is Bobby Loudon. Uh, he works with Archway Audio. It's his company. Um, he actually just moved to Nashville, um, and recording was is always 
it's it's way more tedious than people think that it is. Um, but I I like being in the hot box. We call it the hot box. It's like this little, you know, with yeah. just a microphone in there. It's so hot in there. But uh, so he's done all of our all of our producing and our mixing and mastering and stuff. And he, like I said, he's out in Nashville now. So it gives us another excuse to go out there now. Um, but he was actually uh, on a on a in a screamo band, which is kind of which is kind of cool, like heavy metal. They were on Warp Tour and all kinds of stuff. So he's got oh, wow. like a completely different perspective on music. And and I think that we learned a lot from each other. And um, like I said, I take my 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 live band that that goes everywhere with me. They've done all the recording with me and stuff. So um, it's been great, man. I mean, I wouldn't want to work with anybody else than the team that I got behind me now. So, yeah. What was it like trying to build these connections? You have a live band, you have a producer. Like, how did you meet all these people? And was it challenging for you? Yeah, it took a long time to find a full band, like way longer than that's. So back to your previous question about Nashville, it's always easier to find. It's easy to find musicians. Yeah. You know, here it's it's like a little bit tougher, you know, because there's just not as many folks around that play or, or at least want to play what you're playing. Um, so growing up there was this band and they're they're called the silver bullet band they still play today they were like uh, our local like band from where i'm from uh actually reached out to me and let me know about this kid that played the drums um and that he was interested in working with me and that he's played with this kid before and he's really good so he gave me his phone number i actually called him he's my drummer now his name's tyler seacrest so i i had a little meeting with him and i went down and and it was super awkward. And we sat in his basement and like looked at each other and kind of like <laughs> fiddled around a little bit. And uh, he was like, well, I got a bass player. He's my roommate in college. And I was like, well, let's call him, you know, bring him in. So we added uh, his name's Travis to to come and to come and jam with us and started getting a feel for each other and kind of getting a feel for what we were going to do. And so we played a number of shows with just us three, with just a three piece there. Uh, and then just uh, about two, three months ago, we finally got a lead player. Um, his name is Max Hopkins, and it really just fell into place. I mean, it it just all happened on accident, really. Uh, but it, it started with me getting Tyler's number and kind of piecing it all together. And they're from the same kind of area, and they went to school at the same place, so they all they all knew each other before beforehand. So that makes it like the chemistry is good all yeah. around now. So yeah, it's awesome. It seems like one connection just leads to the next. Yeah. It kind of just all fell into place like on accident. So yeah. that's awesome. So did you start playing live um, before you had them or is it once you had the band, you started doing your own original music during these shows? Yes. And no, I was in, I was in this duo. Uh, it was just me and another guy and we both played acoustic guitars and we would kind of go around. We played, we played a, a few shows um, and we would play some original music, but mostly covers. Um, and then I did, I, I, I would play like a little bit of acoustic stuff, like tap rooms and stuff like that. Um, but we, I got with the band uh, that I'm with now and we, we, we got asked to go out and do this. Like in, in Kansas, there's this thing called a country stampede. Well, it got canceled due to covid last year well my friends decided uh that they were going to throw this giant like field party uh to like celebrate you know since all of the tickets got canceled and everything so we uh we went out there and it was in topeka which is the capital it was like right outside of town in this giant field and we just sat up on this trailer and we just jammed for like four hours and these people loved it and we're like yeah, this is it, man. Like this, they love it. Like, this is what we're going to do, you know, like let's, let's keep this ball rolling. And it's kind of been just downhill from there. And it's, it's been great. It's just, we've been uh, very fortunate to be able to play. Like I said, with the kind of the COVID deal going on, it's been a lot uh, less restrictive here than I know it has been in other places. I don't know how Utah has been, but. Yeah, it's, it's definitely affecting everywhere for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, though. Um, so, what's um, what's been your favorite show you've played so far? That's that's like a loaded question. That's like, what if somebody watches this and they're like, "Oh, this guy doesn't like playing here." Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
you know, I'll tell you our favorite, our, our probably favorite place that we've played and we play about every month, like once a month. It's called Bull Creek Distillery. It's this, it's this beautiful place up uh, just, just north of where we're at. Um, and they have like a bowery for weddings and everything. And it's just like a, it's kind of an upscale distillery and they've, and they've treated us like family and they, they kind of gave us our first real shot as like, this is like a real show, you know, like, and I tried to book there like previously for like a couple of years with the other guy I was, I was playing music with and they would never have us. And then they, they finally were like, all right, well, we've heard enough good, like people have been talking about you. So we'll have you. And we've pretty much haven't missed a month since, uh, since they've had us. So that, I would say that's probably our, our go-to spot. They treat us real well up there. So. That's awesome. Yeah. I've heard good things about that place for sure. Um, yeah. What's the experience like? So you mentioned, you know, you had to build your reputation. Is that something that's very common around Nashville? You have to build reputation before you play these places or how does the booking process go? Uh, for Nashville, you know, it's, it's quite a bit different, you know, so Broadway uh, where, you know, everybody goes on, on vacation, everybody goes to Broadway. Um, the, the big difference between what people think it's like and what it actually is, is Nashville, like those places in Broadway, they are on a schedule with bands. Like they have a very like strong schedule with this is the band that's here for months. You know, they, they don't, they don't really, it's, it's actually pretty tough to get into a Broadway uh, bar unless you are very frequent or play there, you know, once a week or twice a week or whatever the case is. The big thing for Nashville that I, I at least from my experience, I, some other people may, may have a different experience than I have, but it's it's big on writers rounds. And so building that connection with those people that have been in Nashville that do all those writers rounds three, four times a week. That's where you really get in on on meeting the people that you need to meet to get into those bigger places. Um, <clears throat> the outskirts of Nashville are, are, are a little different. You can you can find shows out there for a full band. But it is tough on Broadway to find like a full band like gig. So the writers rounds are huge. Um, like I said, at least from my experience, that's kind of where it's at for, like I said, singer songwriters anyway. Yeah, that's interesting. So for someone who's either wanting to move to Nashville or is just getting started in Nashville, what advice would you give them to get their, I guess, their ball rolling? Um, I would say just go and market yourself in person. Um, I built more connections in a week in Nashville than I did in like three months over the internet. Wow. <laughs> I think, I think that going, showing your face and, and meeting, meeting people face to face says a lot and it goes a lot farther than, you know, just DMing a, a complete stranger out of nowhere, which sometimes it, it's fine. I've had people, message me on Instagram and, and we've actually written, I've written some songs with some people that have done that and it's actually worked out. Um, but, but I, I'm more of a, a talk to you face to face kind of person. And, um, luckily, um, I, I kind of had a friend that was moved out there that kind of put me on a couple of those writers rounds. And then, so I played one and then got, got the, uh, the host number and they wanted to put me on some more. And then that host knows somebody that does another writer's round across town. And you see how that kind of falls. It's, it's really just about getting out there, networking yourself, in my opinion, in person and, and having, you know, good content and good, good music is, is a part of it. But <clears throat> being personable with people is, is definitely a, a huge part of that. Yeah. I, I, I love what you're saying. And I, totally think that's great advice. Um, something I've heard a lot about Nashville is it's like, it's important also to have the hang element where like you have to be personal with these people. It's, <coughs> excuse me. It's almost as important as it is to, you know, play the good music is just how well you get along with people and how they know you. Um, yeah, so and, I love what you're saying. Yeah. And carrying, carrying yourself as, as somebody that's, you know, not a jerk and, and, and willing to, to, to be just a guy, you know, and just, and just be a, a decent person. And, and uh, it'll, it'll, it'll go a long way for you. And it, I will tell you that Nashville is a very humbling place <laughs> yeah. uh, for a musician. I mean, some of these guys are out like crazy, man. I mean, they're so good. 
and it's and it's like man these are so much better than these songs i'm listening to on the radio every day like i would like it's a i hope that this guy makes it because he's got some really great stuff and and honestly i prefer going to those writers rounds because you see some really really talented people yeah absolutely well that's awesome that's great advice um what are you excited for that's coming up for you well um we we have a show um this weekend um it's 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 just like a little dive uh dive bar but we've got um five shows in the month of may so we're on every week uh every weekend in may which is great uh i'm thankful for that that's that's something to really look forward to and then in june we're actually going to take some time off i know it's not great to say you're like looking for some time off but uh, we only have one show in June, but then we're going to spend uh, four days in Nashville. We're going to record some new some new music. Um, so looking forward to the busy month of May and then the relaxing month of June ahead for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. And I think, you know, the downtime is kind of underrated for us. Like how important it is kind of stick, step back sometimes, especially after yeah. pushing so much and especially if you have a family. Like you yeah. need that time to kind of find yourself again. And I think it's that's awesome you're doing it. Yeah, and my wife is is one of the most supportive people that I have in on my team and, and behind me and beside me through this whole thing. And she sacrifices a lot of time and and so do my kids. And I'll I'll never forget that. And and I will I will forever be grateful for my family that has supported me through this whole process. 